Just go for it, okay. Well, it's great to be back. It's um, a real privilege to be here speaking to all of you. Um, it's nice to be in church in person. This is the first time in seven months I've been inside a church um, and been able to, to worship in person, which is really exciting. So I do apologize if I ramble and get overexcited there. Um, but yeah, so last week, John kicked off a new series called Good News Bringers and spoke about John the Baptist. And today I'm going to be looking at a famous passage where Jesus calls some of his disciples and be looking specifically at the good news bringers, Andrew and Philip. And I think when I was reading this passage, I thought that was a great title to give someone when you're being preached on 2,000 years later. Good news bringer. That's um, something I would like to be called myself. And I've spoken about this somewhere before. I'm not sure if it was at Liberton before, but I quite often think of what my legacy is going to be. I think it's a really important thought, and it's a really important thought of mine that kind of drives my actions, drives what I do, and kind of keeps me up at night as well. But I ask the question of how do I want to be remembered? People's legacies are usually talked about at funerals once the minister gives their eulogy, and then once um, they've got a gravestone, their legacies are shortened to just three short lines. I've definitely spoken about this somewhere before, but it's shortened to just your name, your timeline of your life, and then a couple of words, something like loving father, husband, and son, something like that. And I do think about what my legacy is going to look like. I wonder what people are going to remember me for once I've run my race. What are people going to remember? But that's a really heavy thought for a Sunday morning. And I'm hoping it's too early in the day and also in my lifetime to be thinking about what's going to be on my gravestone. So I thought I'd try and lighten the mood a wee bit and talk about memes instead. Does anyone, anyone know what memes are? Yep, a couple of people nodding their heads. Basically, they're photos or videos with funny captions, usually on social media to capture a trend. And there was one a few years ago. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers it. Be like Bill. Anyone remember that one? said something like, be like Bill, gave a, a short caption, usually having a dig at a trend or a dig at people who do silly things and saying, Bill doesn't do this, be like Bill. I'm going to give you a few examples. So I think they're going to be up on the screen. There we go. This is, this is a good example. It says, this is Bill. Bill helps the poor. Bill doesn't take pics or re records while doing it. Bill is smart and humble. Be like Bill. So basically, He's having a dig at people on social media who do nice things, but want praise for it. They take photos and say, look what I did. I'm so nice. And it's saying, no, Bill doesn't do that. Bill's smart and humble. Be like Bill. Next one. This is Bill. Bill wakes up and sees it snowing outside. Bill doesn't feel the urge to post a status about it on Facebook because he knows his friends also have windows. Bill is smart. Be like Bill. And then the last one for this section. This made me laugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is Sarah. Sarah buys a sheep. Sarah calls it relation. Now Sarah has a relationship. <laughs> I usually hate puns, but it didn't make me laugh. <laughs> Sarah is smart. Be like Sarah. So you get what I mean. This was, a, this was a trend a few years back. And it was basically to have digs at people and have digs at trends. And it was all funny. And this is obviously light-hearted, but on a more serious note, what if this was a photo of me? What would it say? It would obviously start with, this is Brad, but what am I known for? What do I do that people remember and have an opinion on? And I often wonder, would it even say, be like Brad? Or would it say, don't be like Brad? I often have a joke with my friends that when they have kids in the future, their hypothetical future kids, that'll be called Uncle Brad, as in don't copy Uncle Brad. But it's a good question to think about. What are we known for? Because as believers, people are watching. We might not have our conversations recorded like Andrew and Philip did, or parts of our lives recorded like they did in the Gospels, but people are watching how we live. People are noticing what we do, and they make a decision about whether the Christian life is desirable based on our actions 
our reactions, how we talk about Jesus, how we talk about church, how we talk about other Christians. People will notice these things. If I'm sitting with my friends on a Saturday night and I'm saying, oh, can't be bothered with church tomorrow. So boring. Do you think that these people are going to think, oh, I'm going to try that. That sounds like a good thing. What we do and what we say matters. And that brings us to our passage today. And the people we're preaching on, the good news bringers, we see that their lives affected others. And we see that the course of history was changed because of their actions and their reactions. So I'm going to read from John 1, 35 to 51. It should be on the screen. Yes. Let's make sure I've got the same version here. Yes. So the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. And the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. And Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So we see Jesus interacts with a few of his disciples here. Andrew, what most people believe to be John, is the other one that was one of John the Baptist's disciples. Peter, Philip, and then Nathaniel. And today's sermon is about the two good news bringers in this story, which is Andrew and Philip. And to try and tie into my meme introduction, we're going to try and use these short passages to see what legacy these guys built. Now, there's not too much to know about either of them, and these passages are probably the most famous ones about Andrew and Philip. And other than that, Andrew was in the boat with Peter when Jesus called them to be fishers of men. And both Andrew and Philip were responsible for bringing some Greek people to Jesus in John 12, living up to their titles as fishers of men. And in this story, we see the impact that Andrew and Philip had on the other disciples. They brought both Peter and Nathaniel to Jesus and kind of helped got the team to get, get in the team, sorry, did their part and get the team together. And in this, I've already read that part. That's pretty much their legacy. Their legacy was that they brought people to Jesus, important people to Jesus. We know that Nathaniel went on to follow Jesus, but they also brought Peter to Jesus. And we know the significance of Peter. And this reaction of going to tell people about Jesus is a desirable one, especially when you contrast it 
to Nathaniel's reaction. Nathaniel's first reaction to being told about Jesus was to attack Jesus' hometown, asking what good has ever come from Nazareth. And ashamedly, I can kind of relate to Nathaniel. There was definitely times before I came to faith where I criticized believers, where I attacked the Christian faith and laughed off the idea of God. So if my coming to faith story was recorded, it'd probably look a bit more like Nathaniel's. Ignorant, humbling, and probably a tad humiliating as well. But Nathaniel changed his tune once Jesus told him he saw him under the fig tree, believing that he must be the Messiah. Which I've always found quite confusing. And I think Jesus did too, because he said he'll see much greater things than this. Jesus was about to feed 5,000 people with a couple of loaves of bread and a couple of fish. He's about to calm storms. He's about to raise from the dead. And yet Nathaniel was impressed that he saw him under the fig tree. And I know there's more to it than that. I know that Jesus looked into his heart. And Jesus looks into all of, all of our hearts. And I'm sure we've all had that come into Jesus moment that Nathaniel had when he realized that this was the Messiah. This was the Christ. And I don't know what made you believe for the first time. For me, it first clicked when I went to stage in Sam. On day one, there was a guy called Tom Hammond doing the talks and he shook a bag of Lego. Now the bag of Lego was meant to turn into a red Ferrari, but he shook it while it was still in pieces. And he asked, how long am I gonna to have to shake this for before it turns into that red Ferrari? It was obviously designed, designed specifically to become a red Ferrari, but there was instructions. It was quite a relatively complex design that someone had to, to look at the instructions and do it. And he shook that bag and he asked, how long would I have to shake it for until it became the red Ferrari? And I was standing there as a 16 year old kid thinking that's never gonna happen. And then he asked the question of, how much more improbable is it that the universe came into existence by chance if I can't even shake this bag and it turns into what it's supposed to be? I don't know what made you believe. Maybe you don't yet. Maybe you don't yet know whether this is real. Maybe you're waiting for that one good reason to come for you to take this seriously. But I can assure you there are enough good reasons for you to believe and take this seriously. And like in the case of Nathaniel, what's important is a reaction. Nathaniel went on to become a follower of Jesus, often identified as the apostle Bartholomew in other gospels, because the name Nathaniel is only mentioned in the book of John. And that also, went on to become a follower of Jesus and took the life of a disciple seriously, enough so to pursue a life in ministry. And Nathaniel's legacy can now rightfully be as a disciple of Jesus. But other than that, how is Nathaniel known? What is Nathaniel best known for, if I was to raise the question? It was asking Philip, if anything good came out of Nazareth. Before I sat down to write this sermon and the name Nathaniel was there, I knew exactly what my first impression of him was. And I'm not trying to dig Nathaniel out here. I'm sure he was a great guy and has a solid legacy as a disciple of Jesus, as one of the early church leaders. But can you see how our actions and our reactions are important? People remember how we act. People remember what we do. And in contrast to Nathaniel, Andrew and Philip's initial reaction, the first reaction was to know that Jesus was the son of God, was to know that Jesus was the Messiah. And their reaction was to play a part in bringing Peter and Nathaniel to Jesus, playing their part in changing the world. And obviously we don't need to talk about Peter's legacy anymore or Nathaniel's legacy. But Andrew and Philip's reaction 
of bringing them to Jesus helped change the course of history. They took their faith in Jesus seriously. From the moment they met him, they took him seriously. And look at the impacts that their faith and witness made on the rest of the world. Two men who pointed one man each changed the course of history. And obviously, they're known for doing so much more. And they did so much more with their lives. But even if that was their only, their main part of their legacy, even if that was it, that they brought one man each to Jesus, the legacy was great. That's what they would be known for, was bringing people to Jesus. Now, I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know why you're here. But just as Jesus said to Nathaniel that you'll see even greater things, I can assure you that there's reasons to believe. So if you've not made that step, I do encourage you to make that step. Or if you've not taken that step seriously yet, I encourage you to do so. Take this seriously, because this faith isn't just a once a week activity. It's great being back in a physical church building with people. But faith isn't just about the once a week Sunday meeting. And it's not a small part of our lives. It's not come to church and go away and live the rest of our lives. This faith is life changing. It has eternal consequences. And our actions and our reactions, our faith and our witness can change the course of history. And it can change other people's lives and their eternities. That's the legacy of Andrew and Philip. And that's the legacy that I want too. And at least that's the best answer I've come up with when I stay up at late at night. And I think, what do I want to be known for? I want to be known for the same thing that Andrew and Philip are known for. I want to be known as a good news bringer. Can I have the last slide, please? I, I don't know if that's you, or last slide. This is Andrew and Philip. They met Jesus, recognized him as the Messiah, and told others about him, changing their lives. They are good news bringers. Be like Andrew and Philip. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this story. And I thank you for Andrew and Philip, who took your word seriously, who took you seriously and went on to change or to help change other people's lives by pointing them to you. And I thank you for the impact that they had on Peter and Nathaniel and the impact they all had on the world. And I pray that this morning we hear this message and take it seriously. That we take seriously the call to be good news bringers so that we can play our part in changing history and making history. And I pray that we can play our part in seeing other people come to know you. Seeing people come to you so that they can have their eternities changed. And I pray that we all go out today as good news bringers. And do you go with us? And do you change the people around us by our faith and our witness? In your name, amen.